So I've got this all done, all dialed in exactly how I want it. But the last few nights I've just been sitting thinking like, well, the cutlass bearing has all these little water passages through it to allow water inside because it's a water lubricated bearing. So the shaft alley fills up with water. So if water can get in, that means Torito worms can get in. Torito worms have tormented mariners for centuries. Also known as shipworms or termites of the sea, they're actually a type of clam that eats wood. They devour timber, devastating the integrity of planks, rendering them useless, mimicking Swiss cheese. Found in every ocean now, they thrive in tropical climates, but can survive in as low as 34 degree water and up to six weeks without oxygen. This is why protecting a wooden hull is so crucial. Back in the day of wooden ships and iron men, the first real defense against these dirty little buggers came in the form of sheathing. Earliest form was lead, then to be succeeded by copper, which became the norm until the less labor intensive and more cost effective anti-fouling paints became available, which includes a high percentage of copper. Easiest way to take care of worms would be to sail into fresh water, as they can't handle the low salinity but most torch their planks to kill them. You could also travel to the Philippines and make a fortune selling them as they're a delicacy there. Little lime, chili, and onion, mmm. That's a terrifying thought. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the prop shaft out and I'm gonna take this housing off that holds the cutlass bearing. And I take the prop shaft out. I'm just gonna make a plate of plywood that I'm gonna bolt on back here with these hanger bolts and I'm going to drill a hole in the plywood and have uh, a little tube coming out of it that I can crimp up and then from the inside I'm going to take the collar off of the uh, stuffing box that holds the flax and I'm going to just clamp on a hose up to a funnel and I'm going to mix up a batch of thinned epoxy and I'm gonna pour, fill up the entire shaft log, fill up the entire shaft alley with uh, thinned epoxy, and then repeat the process, fill the whole shaft alley up again with thinned epoxy, let it sit, drain it out, let that kick a little bit, then I'll thicken that epoxy up just a little bit. I'll repeat it probably two more times, fill the whole alley up with regular, slightly thick epoxy, let it sit for a minute or two, drain it out, Hopefully by doing that process, the entire shaft alley from the inside will be, not only have penetrating epoxy that hopefully soaks into the wood quite a bit, it'll also have a couple layers of um, epoxy just coating the outside of the wood and that should be sufficient to keep, uh, keep any worms from boring into it. So it'll be basically just like a epoxy lined inside of the shaft alley. Yeah, <laughs> really excited about it. <laughs> Garrett first cleaned the alley, then set up the shop vac to dry the shaft out for a week. While that's going, he returns to the cap rails. So I'm finally starting to um, fasten in the cap rail now got all the pieces laminated up. I'm using the same fasteners that I used on the hull planking, which are number 14 by three inch hot dip galvanized uh, screws. So <clears throat> they're quarter inch screws. You can see I'm screwing into the uh, black locust stanchion here. And so this black locust stanchion has a really good holding power because um, it's such a dense wood, even though it's going into the end grain. And then on each stanchion as I go down the line and you know, I'll angle this one that way and then I'll angle the next one that way so the screws will kind of be going in like that which will also give them better holding power and then also in areas that have a lot more pull up on them like where we put the uh, the winches for the jib sheets I'll probably also maybe bolt through some brackets onto the bulwarks or just put some more screws along the planking just for uh, some extra holding power but um, for the most part these these are big thick screws going down to these locust stanchions so that should be plenty of 
holding power. And then we're also gonna glue the whole thing on with 5200. So this is the tapered um, countersink bit that I got for the uh, hull planking. It's size for number 14s for cutting a countersink and doing the pilot, but, and this works great for fastening the hull planking into the fur frames, but these locust stanchions are so hard that I've found that if I use this tapered bit, the screws will snap. It needs a, a larger, pilot hole than you would normally use um, for softwood into softwood. So I drill it with this because it's convenient and then I take 3 16 bit and I kind of bore it out an extra little bit or else the screw will just snap when I try to drill it into this locus. living very much so in the construction zone. <laughs> Lots of progress are hanging and halfway to completed or mostly completed. I'm really trying to launch the boat I think like in two weeks or so. So we still have a lot of things and the biggest one is going to be sanding the whole boat and repainting everything on the outside. Uh, but Garrett's working on the cap rails today, as well as drying out the uh, shaft alley uh, where the prop shaft comes through. And I'll be glued to the computer once again and try and work through some of the noises and the banging. But yeah, this is pretty much what an average day for us looks like. Uh, our tools laying out because there's no sense in putting them all away every night to bring them all out every morning and we don't really have set cubby space for everything yet or storage so things are either on deck or down here crammed into our living space and then sometimes you just gotta get work done so you don't really have time to clean everything every single day and that kind of weighs heavy on your mind sometimes. Boatyard's a pretty messy place and sometimes just really have to try hard to keep that all into perspective that we're not going to be in the boatyard forever and more importantly we're not going to be building the boat forever. So we just pulled off the port side. We've got it propped up here pretty precariously. <laughs> but Garrett's ready to start sanding the underside yeah, and got you've got everything pre, pre bleh, you got everything pre-drilled yeah everything's pre pre-drilled so um i just need to do a quick sand just to clean up the whole bottom of this and make sure everything's even and then i'll probably do the same on that side just quick sand quick wipe with acetone and on then, the bulwarks themselves yeah yeah and then i'll take the um a tube of 5200 and I'll just run a bead along the whole um, top of the bulwarks and a little circle around each screw hole on the top of each stanchion. And then go ahead and kind of pre-drill the screws in a little bit just so the tips are sticking out. That way it'll be easy to find the screw holes when we set it back down. But we'll set it down on a nice big bead of 5200 and then clamp it, screw it. And uh, so... Sand it yeah. and soup it. Sand and soup it. 
<laughs> so we'll see how this goes. If this goes well, we'll do the same thing with the starboard side. Maybe we can even get them glued and screwed today. That'd be sweet. Somebody freaking out about I think he was getting nervous and he just started saying some words. Not my balls. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there going up masts. <laughs> you put me in my nuts in a vice. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Oh. <laughs> Never a dull moment in the boatyard. <laughs> so many boatyard noises this morning too. Yeah. Pretty quiet now though. I know. It's like everybody we both, woke up and power houred it and then went home. Yeah, we both thought that we slept in super late. We thought like, oh, it must be like 10, 10.30 because there's so much commotion going on outside. Trucks and heavy equipment, people talking and people walking. It was like, uh, I don't want to get up. And then I feel like we slept in forever and then it's 8.30 when we get up. And then everyone stops. <laughs> like by nine o'clock the boat yard was just quiet. Can the music go back on? Yeah, go for it. I'm gonna get back to editing. Um, you just hollow when you're ready. Okay. So Garrett's done prepping the cap rail, so he's ready to put on the... Are you using 5200? Yeah, because 50... we want to glue it down. So we want to really glue it down, so he's about ready to apply that, and then I'm going to help him put the port cap rail on. Be exciting! Alright, let's put on a cap rail. Cap rail on. Yeah. All right, starboard cap rail, you're next. And then Garrett's still got to do some trimming, rounding of the edges, also, and then a full sanding and souping. So I got the shop back hooked up to a piece of PVC pipe and just blowing air down through this shaft alley. I had it going for a couple days now just to help dry things out and get it as dry as possible before I uh, fill it with epoxy. So that's just kind of doing its thing while I start working on um, finishing the cap rails. Here. So while we wait for the 5200 to dry, up next. Getting ready to drill more holes in the boat. We decide to add two more through holes. Hey. 
thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.